I think this is a beautiful project. It's a wonderful compromise, and I think it'll add a, a, quite a bit to the neighborhood. And I, I thank, uh, I encourage my colleagues to uh, to vote uh, for the appeal on four, five, and nine. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Fry, for coming and making that statement. I'll go ahead and make that motion then. So I'll move to, uh, which actually I had independently uh, come to those conclusions as well. I think this is a beautiful building. Um, uh, so move to uh, approve the appeal for item four, five, and nine. Has ten been officially uh, withdrawn, or should we just move to deny item? As part of you know, Madam Chair, as part of your motion, you could just uh, move to accept the withdrawal on ten. So, again, the motion is to uh, move to approve the appeal for Certificate of Appropriateness items 4, 5, and 9, and to accept the withdrawal of item 10 under the Certificate of Appropriateness. Is there any discussion? Council President. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and I agree with Council Member Fry. I think uh, what we have in front of us is a really uh, exciting development in an area uh, that I am um, very, very familiar with. Uh, my family had a, a business just down uh, another block down uh, East Hennepin for uh, many, many years. And that's a, a reuse of an existing building. Um, it was a funeral home and a, and a <clears throat> uh, furniture store. The furniture store burned, and now it's a lovely patio there next to the um, funeral home turned restaurant. Uh, it's strange to go in there. Let me, let me tell you as someone who, um, spent, uh, time on East Hennepin as a young woman with my father and his brothers who had that business. Um, this area of the city it has changed so very much, but it has the essential elements of what made it, um, a great neighborhood. Um, uh, and this, uh, particular development, I think really respects that history. Uh, but again, brings it into the next century where, um, you know, we, we, uh, have changing needs as a city and the cities always change. And, uh, um, I'm just, I'm really excited about this. I'm glad that, uh, the developer worked, uh, with the church next door, Lady of Lords. And I, I think it's historic because I was baptized there, but whatever. Um, that, that, uh, is a remarkable, uh, beautiful, beautiful, uh, church. When River Place was developed, it w they were very careful to make sure that they didn't block, uh, the view of, of Our Lady of Lourdes down to the riverfront. And, um, this, uh, I think, uh, respects the church and, um, has, has worked with the church and that, that's, that's really important to me. So, uh, I'm delighted to see this. I think it'll be a great addition to Northeast Minneapolis and, uh, look forward to uh, seeing it come to fruition. Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to say kudos to the developers on the design of this. I happen to have uh, Hiawatha Avenue in Ward 12, and we have a lot of uh, large developments there which don't offer a lot of visual uh, change throughout the structure. They can be just like big, long, blocky mm -hmm. buildings. And... I think this is what's so remarkable about this is that you are varying different materials and heights, and it has such visual interest and contrast, and uh, I think will absolutely enhance the streetscape and hopefully be uh, an inspiration for other developments to come. And so I just think top-notch work on the uh, design is very, very intriguing, very, uh, very great. Any further discussion? No, I will note, I, I can see the... I, I can see going either way on, on this condition nine. So I did want to sort of state for staff and the HPC, I, I see where that, that, um, that impetus was coming from to really kind of want that to be more of an historic, uh, building. And with this design, it just looks like more of a modern building. And so I just wanted to acknowledge that that's, we are kind of making that policy choice here. Uh, so if there's any further discussion, seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that carries. Uh, we do have a brief presentation now here for items six and seven. This is a um, an appeal of, uh, no, sorry, this is a designation. But the HPC recommended designating one of the buildings that had been nominated by Council Member Yang, but not um, designating the other building. So I thought a presentation was in order, and so we'll start with staff. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Jim Vole. I'm a city planner in the Long Range Planning Division of CPED. Um, the site is just uh, west of Interstate 94 on West Broadway, the north side. Um, 
up the north side of West Broadway and the north side of Minneapolis. Um, there are two buildings there, uh, 404 and 410 West Broadway, but they're under one parcel, one tax ID and one ownership, and they were nominated together. But through the process, we ended up splitting them out into two designation studies and, and two actions. So my presentation will mix a little bit of both of them as I go through. But um, 404 is a former independent order mm -hmm. of Oddfellows building uh, from about 1897 to around 1975, and then it was used as a, a commercial building after that. And 410 was at one time a, a white castle uh, from 1927 to 43, and then was various diners or restaurants um, most recently the Broadway Diner up until 1977. Just a aerial view of it. Um, the, 410, uh, the 410 building, the 404, the Odd Fellows building. To the west is the whole Kemp Stary, and, and to the east is 400, the Batson Meyer building, or most people know it as Friedman's Department Store. That's also a potential historic resource. And I should say that the, the two buildings that we're talking about today are owned by Kemp's, the property owner to the west. This is just a picture of the former restaurant, White Castle, the former Odd Fellows, and the 400 building Freedman's mm -hmm. Department Store. Um, just a little bit of history. Kemp's bought the properties and in 2014, July of 2014, came in looking for a wrecking permit to demolish the buildings. And staff made the determination at that point that they were potential historic resources and needed to go to the HPC for, for consideration of that demolition. Before that happened, Council Member Yang nominated the properties and later in July of 2014, the HPC approved that nomination and directed us to do a designation study. We extended the interim protection that they established in 2015 to January of 2016. So that's coming up um, January 16th. So we, um, are out of interim protection in, uh, by January 16th of this year. Uh, the designation studies were done by the CPED staff and went to SHPO and CPC and the HPC. Uh, your staff report has that, has comment letters from SHPO, the uh, Planning Commission, and correspondence from the public. You also have in there a, and it's an important uh, piece of information, a condition report. Uh, from camps and a letter from camps explaining their position on the condition of the building and their uh, opinions on the designation. So talking about 404, um, that's just a picture of what it looks like, an odd fellow's lodge, the, the front of it. Looking easterly down West Broadway at the, the boarded up storefront in the front. And then looking at the back of the building right there. We found uh, our staff made the recommendation that it was in the designation study that it was significant under criteria one and three. Uh, one being that it's associated with significant events or periods the, um, that exemplify broad patterns of cultural, political, or economic, or social history. Basically, because the uh, it's an early example of an Odd Fellows Lodge. It's one of the oldest. It was the second one in the city and the fourth in the state. It was also the first Rebecca Lodge and the second in the state. And the Rebecca Lodge was a, a type of lodge that the Odd Fellows had that allowed women to, to um, be members. Uh, the Odd Fellows had an interesting organizational structure that mirrored the U.S. Constitution um, and other fraternal organizations copied that. Um, and they were also pioneers in social welfare, women's rights, and uh, were at this site from 1897 to 1975. There are no other ones designated in the city as Odd Fellows Lodges. Uh, also significant under criteria number three, uh, associated with distinctive elements of city or neighborhood identi identity. And the distinctive elements of neighborhood identify is identity as being a commercial building part of the West Broadway commercial corridor. And just some pictures of what the corridor looked like in, in 1914, the buildings being there. You can see rows of, of uh, storefront buildings, a picture in 19, sorry, a uh, picture in 1949. This would be looking at, if you were standing on the off-ramp from I-94 looking west, you could see see the rows of buildings. 1964 with Friedman's in the front, the Odd Fellows here, and then the 410 at that time, I believe, was the Broadway, Broadway Diner, also a Chevy. Corvair right there, which was a really cool car. Um, <laughs> looking through the a plan that the city did in um, 1964 called um, This is West Broadway, you can see the rows of storefront 
front buildings. This was a building inventory that they did in there, and that's before the, the interstate came through. Um, so West Broadway was, you know, what's significant about that? West Broadway is part of the streetcar network. It was important, the most important commercial street in North Minneapolis. And um, a lot of the information in the designation study comes from something called the North Minneapolis Context Study, and I won't go through the whole history of West Broadway, but um, it just explains, and you can read that in the designation study about the importance of this, this corridor. But after World War II, and this is probably obvious to everybody, there were broad social and economic trends that impacted West Broadway, and that would be, you know, elimination of the streetcar, people tending to use autos more, moving to the suburbs, uh, some of the racial tensions that happened, suburbanization, the construction of malls, and all of those had an impact on West Broadway. But West Broadway didn't see significant vacancies in their businesses, according to this study, until about 1960. But then between 1960 and 1973, over 100 businesses left the area. And at this point, you start seeing some of the planning that we did that started talking about tearing down chunks of West Broadway and building a mall on West Broadway. That's a plan from 64. Uh, from 1975, this would be the site right here that Cloverleaf now camps dairy. Interstate 94, this is my drawing on top of there, but just showing all of the, the red X's being all of the buildings that were taken down, moving westward just continually. See, I mean, I think you get the picture of how many buildings have come down so that you're at the point now where you, you see West Broadway has many of the, the buildings set back and parking lots in front of them. I show that not to say that we should keep tearing buildings down or to say that everything is gone, but just to give you the context that there are a couple remnant parts of the West Broadway Commercial Corridor, and that would be this little area, although we're only considering two buildings, east of Kemp's, and then, of course, as we get further down on West Broadway on the south side. Um, so we felt that, that this building had historic significance and it retained its historic integrity. That's a little bit different than structural condition or building condition, but historic condition of the building for all of the factors, location, design, setting, materials, workmanship, feeling, and association. And I won't go through all of that, and, and I wouldn't want to lose you here. Um, and we felt that the period of significance was from 1897 to 1964, the time it was built till about the time the West Broadway Corridor started to have these dramatic changes. Uh, the the uh, City Planning Commission thought that this designation was in conformance with the comp plan. There's a letter in your packet. Shippo said that it was a good State Historic Preservation Office, said it was a good candidate for designation, and there's a letter. And the HPC also recommended that the uh, City Council approve it as a landmark. At this point, I can go on and talk about 410, the next one if you want, or I can let you consider 404. I think that would be appropriate to talk about the next building. So this is a picture of 410, the, the diner building, the former White Castle building. Um, I want to point out that the placards on there are not a violation notice, but that's just a notice of the Heritage Preservation Commission meeting. This is an addition that was done to the building in 1943, also using this enamel brick. Just some more pictures of its architectural detail and condition, and a picture of what it looked like in 1927. So we found that this building had historic significance under three criteria. The first criteria is the broad patterns of cultural, political, or social, or economic history. And um, boy, I tell you, I think way more about White Castle than is probably healthy, but um, 410 is an early example of a White Castle. It's the oldest surviving one in Minneapolis. Um, White Castle was one of the first uh, fast food carryout changes, and they established the hamburger as an American food. They, the hamburger was considered really actually kind of an unsavory food, and White Castle, for better or worse, made people think that it was a safe, good food. Uh, and they promoted food safety and standardization. That was really the model for almost all of the other fast food restaurants in the country. We also thought it was significant for distinctive characteristics of architectural engineering type or style. And this style is called novelty or programmatic style. It's built to look like a castle to make you want to go buy a white castle. 
And the interesting thing about this is that these uh, White Castle used to build cinder block buildings, and then they started building white enamel brick buildings between 1924 and 1929. And then after that, they did the porcelain steel ones that you see, like the one down on Lindale Avenue that can that can be detached and moved. And this is one of three surviving from that 1924 to 1929 period. One is in Kansas City and one is in Indianapolis. And then there's another one from 1930, which was actually a period when they started doing the porcelain rather than the enamel brick in Chicago. And I don't know how much stomach you have for all of this, but um, I've got pictures of all of the White Castle brick ones in Minneapolis that were torn down if you want to see them. But at this point, I won't uh, show them all to you. Um, however, as you can see, in 1944, when White Castle sold the building, it became the Silver Street Diner. And as a condition of the sale, they request they required that the battle the battlements on the top be removed. So you see that in other pictures that they're gone, mm -hmm. and that the tower that was there be removed. And later, the uh, gooseneck lights were taken off, and an addition was put on the side. So um, a lot of that early White Castle architectural novelty architecture has been changed, although there's still elements of it there. And then finally, we thought that it had significance, or we found that it had significance for being um, associated with distinctive elements of neighborhood identity. And that's the same uh, thing that I just presented for the 404 building, the West Broadway corridor. So I, I won't go through that again. It's just the same, same thing. And so it's really two things. One is significant as a White Castle and architectural for White Castle, and also significant as being part of the West Broadway commercial corridor. And, um, you know, it was a, after White Castle from 1944 to 77, a commercial storefront restaurant building. Um, so looking at the historic integrity, we felt as a White Castle, it's, it's lost, it has its integrity of location, it's still there, but it's lost much of its um, design, setting, materials, workmanship, and feeling. So even though it's significant, a lot of that integrity as a White Castle is gone. But, pardon me. But as a um, storefront commercial building on the West Broadway commercial corridor, it still remains a lot, remains a lot of, still has a lot of its historical integrity remaining. And the period of significance for this building would be 1927 to 1964, once again from when it was built to when the corridor started to see dramatic, chain, dr dramatic changes. I almost coined a word there. Um, the CPC thought it was, the designation was in conformance with the comp plan, and the State Historic Preservation Office sent a letter saying um, that it was a good candidate for a designation. However, uh, the Heritage Preservation Commission did not recommend to you that it be made a landmark. And based on their discussion, I think it was mainly because of the condition of the building. They felt that the historic integrity and maybe even going a little bit beyond the the criteria to be considered, the actual physical condition of the building was considered. Um, and that was a vote, a vote of five to four to not recommend that it be made a landmark. Um, at this point, I can answer any questions that you might have. Are there any questions for staff? There are none. Thank you. Um, so we did not notice this as a public hearing, so there will not be any public comment. So we can move to decision. My inclination would be to uphold the HPC recommendation, but I can see if anyone else wants to make a motion. That's fine. So I'll go ahead and move to, um, then that would be, let's see, to approve the landmark designation for item number six, which is 404 West Broadway, and deny the landmark designation for 410 West Broadway, which is item number seven. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in approval, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That carries. Thank you. And we are adjourned. Thanks so much. Did we do the appointments already? <laughs>